Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Passing Money. You know who we are, so let's get into it. Um, the ad, the old adage or the time on an argument in the stock market when it comes to investing is, should you time the market or should you dollar cost average in? So before I give you an example of what I do, Alex, what's your thoughts on should dollar cost average in versus time of the market to invest? Yeah, you should dollar cost average for sure. Um I don't know if you would consider timing the market as far as like waiting for a pullback. That's kind of what I do. I wait to see, um, like yeah. say I'm investing in a stock. I'll look at the charts and such, try to understand where it's going to go from there. And then if I'm expecting a pullback, I'll just wait. I'll be patient. And then if there is one, then I'll dollar cost average and buy more. Um, I probably like Altria is like a like as an example but like that's one i kind of just put money into so it depends on your strategy but yeah dollar cost averaging is a good way to go yeah and and the thing is is you you have the traders out there and fyi for people that don't know like 90 percent. i know the number is higher but i'll give a grace period 90 percent of people that call themselves traders or day traders 90 percent of them people blow up their account multiple times and they go broke just so you know. Um, so when they say in time in the market, it's, you know, it's those people out there that believe that they're smarter than everybody else. They see where the stock is at, at the low, and then they buy it in at the low. And then they know exactly where the high point is before the stock, uh, where the stock is going to start dropping at. So they sell before the drop. Can you make money doing that? Yeah. Can you make money over a long period of time getting in and getting out, like I said, 90% of the traders go broke. So I'll let you decide that part. Um, so what I do, and Alex uh, mentioned it or acquiesced to it earlier, I do a little hybrid of both timing and dollar cost averaging. So with that, I'm just going to bring up a chart of the market and then I'll show you what I mean. So let me find this one here. So, Alice, can you see my screen? Yep. Yep. It's up there. All right. So, this right here is the uh, S&P 500. I mean, as y'all see, as we're doing this video, the stock market is down this day. But this is the S&P 500 or the SPY. This is the ETF for the S&P 500, the SPX, which is this one. All right. So, Alex, as you remember, heading to 2002, uh, Jerome Powell, Fed chair, he mentioned at Jackson Hole that they're going to start raising rates. And then we mentioned it, or I mentioned it to you guys that's in our private class about they're going to start uh, raising rates and the stock market will go down. So this was 2002. And then so what I do is on a monthly basis, no matter what, good times, bad times, no matter what, I have a set amount that I invest on a monthly basis, dollar cost averaging into the SPY, into the NASDAQ 100. But I'm just using SPY example, but I do this across all of my uh, funds. So once I once we came to that realization in the private class, I was still dollar cost averaging when it was going up, dollar cost averaging. And then what I do is when, when we have events, especially like Jerome Powell talking to Jackson Hole, and I know the market is going to go down, I remember where it started at right here at 477. And then what I do is, so let's just use, for example, if I'm dollar cost averaging a thousand dollars a month, when the market is going down, I will double or triple my dollar cost average. So what I mean by this, so if I, if I was dollar cost averaging every month, a thousand bucks, when the market start going down and you see we're in a bear market, dollar cost averaging jumps up to, you know, 2,000 bucks, 3,000 bucks. And I do it the entire time until I reach a midpoint. So I dollar cost average the whole 2022. I mean, I double down on my dollar cost averaging, triple down on my dollar cost averaging. And then I mentioned that when the SPY or the SPX gets back to 4,200, I will peel back my uh Dollar cost averaging. So a dollar cost average because I knew there was going to be raising rates and raising rates is a headwind for the market. So 
all 2022. And I've done this many other times, but I'm just using the last, you know, last year or so to give this example. I, I tripled down on my dollar cost averaging, dollar cost averaging, and I kept doing it the whole year. And I said, when the, when the stock market or the SPY gets to 4200 I mean, $420 or the SPX get to $4,200, then I'll peel back and just go back to my normal dollar cost averaging. And that's exactly what I did. And then when it got back up here to $420, $4,200 here in June, I just took off the I just took off the extra funds that I was dollar cost averaging with. And then I just let it run. And then those extra funds, I'm just building up, building up, building up to go put towards another investment. And then that's how I can get more shares when the market is going down and then so my break even or my cost basis gets lower. And then when the market goes up, I profit at a higher level. And then that's that's really what I do. And then now I'm just back to my original dollar cost averaging that I was doing here but when the market was going up uh, before the Jackson Hole speech. And that's just that's just how I go about it. And then I'll stop sharing the screen now. And. It, what that does is it, it gives me the ability to still participate in the market and then use, you know, Warren Buffett's philosophy of when it's blood in the streets, be greedy when others are fearful. When the market is going down and everybody was scared in 2022, I was being greedy. I was adding more money to the market, more money to the market, more money to the market. Then when we start getting to the euphoric state, uh, we're not there yet, but if we start getting to the euphoric state, that's when I will get more fearful to prepare for another downturn. But what I do know is the stock market itself has has a 100 percent history of always going higher than the uh, previous high that it's had. So me, I have no problem with going dollar cost average and buying more, buying more when it's, the stock is down or the market is down. But I do that with all of uh, my index funds that I have. I actually do that if it's and, you know, Alex and for everybody else that don't know, my individual stock portfolio is not that huge. And if I have a, a stock or a company, a growth company or something like that, that I truly believe in, if I'm seeing I'm getting at a discounted price, I will go in there and buy more shares when it goes down. But I'm not sitting there saying, trying to time and say, oh, when it, once it gets to this level, I'm just going to buy more. I know what the company is. I did the homework and then I just go at it from there. And so when they give me attractive price, then uh, I just buy more shares. Like uh, Peter Lynch said, when the market goes into a bear market, the stock is just going back to its rightful owner. And I want to be the rightful owner when those prices come down. So that's just a quick tutorial on dollar cost average versus time in the market. You can choose whichever one you want to, but I want to share what, what I do and what Alex do when it comes to investing in the stock market. Alex, you got any questions about that before we wrap it up? Nope. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.